A few weeks ago, I sold my old squeeze chute and I told you guys that I was gonna use some of that money that I earned on that sale to buy a new piece of equipment to use out here on the ranch. Well, the new piece of equipment is here and today we're gonna look it over, talk about it, and most importantly, talk about what I'm gonna use it for. That's what's going on today on Farmer Tyler Ranch. So for those of you that don't know, this is a three-point spreader and you can spread seed with this fertilizer. If you live somewhere where it snows, you could spread salt on the road using this very same machine. If you shop at Tractor Supply, you can probably buy the exact same one, but it may not be branded the same as mine is. Mine has clearly been sitting out in their yard for several years. In fact, I had to rip off a price tag from who knows how long ago that advertised this for $630. And I don't think you're gonna find it for that price anywhere now. Mine is branded as a Balin Country Bellin. I'm not really sure how you say that name. Maybe that's why they moved away from it. But I've seen these under the county line name, Tartar, and I think those are the only three. But I would wager a bet that they're all three the exact same spreader. I suspect that the same manufacturing company puts these things together for tractor supply and then they brand them under whatever name they happen to be pushing at the time. But I don't believe that this design has changed very much over the years, except for maybe one thing. Before buying the spreader, I did a fair amount of research or trying to dig up whatever I could find about it, read a bunch of reviews. And one thing that I did come across is that somebody said the old spreader spreaders came with an agitator installed at the factory and that the new ones do not. I can't confirm whether or not that this is true, but I do know that I have an old one here and it does have an agitator, which I'm very happy about because if it didn't have one, I was gonna have to make one. Agitators are important when you're spreading things like fertilizer or possibly salt. What can happen with those materials is as you bounce along, they can sort of compact and cake up in the hopper and then it restricts the flow and it won't it won't feed through there at a normal rate. So that agitator spins around in there and breaks that stuff up to make sure that it continues to flow the way that it should. Another review that I came across was uh, complaining that the spreader didn't come with a PTO shaft and you know that a PTO driven implement should come with a shaft. Well, I agree with that, it should and mine did. So I would suspect that they all are supposed to come with a shaft, but it's something that you might wanna look for when you're buying one. Anytime you get a new piece of equipment, whether it's brand new or just new to you, it's such a good idea to go through and check grease, oil, any sort of vital lubrication points that you know are gonna help this thing run for a long time. I'm reminded of the time that I got my three-point bush hog and the gearbox on that mower didn't have a drop of oil in it. Brand new, came from the dealership. No one said a word about putting oil in it 
but for whatever reason I just decided to check and good thing that I did I wonder how many people run them as long as they can before something breaks and they realize that it was dry the whole time I could see that the PTO shaft had grease in it already but the gearbox that spins the uh, the spinning disc on the bottom of the spreader appeared to be dry and I put about a whole tube of grease in there and I still don't see it protruding out anywhere and I'm not really sure how much you're supposed to put in there but I I assume from the size of it it's gonna take a little bit so for now what we're doing today just kind of messing around seeing how it all works I think there's enough grease but I will probably try to pump some more in there before I actually use this so the way this thing works is really simple you just fill the hopper up with whatever you want to spread turn the PTO shaft on and then you can control the rate at which you spread that item by this little gate here After messing around with this thing for a little while and looking over it, there are a few things that I like about it. And the first thing is that this hopper is all one piece. There's no, there's no riveted or welded seam. I'm not really sure how they did that, but um, that, that's actually a really nice feature because what happens if you have a seam on these hoppers, that is the first place that corrosion and rust is gonna start occurring. This doesn't have a seam, so that's not really an issue. And along those same lines, I'm noticing that a lot of like the bolts are stainless steel and it even looks like this PTO shaft coming out of the gearbox is stainless steel. I almost can't believe that because that seems like too nice of a feature for something at this price point. But you can see that it's not rusted at all and this has been sitting in the yard at Tractor Supply for who knows how many years. If that was just regular steel, it should be rusty. And I think that these little gates that dump the material out onto the spinning dish are stainless steel as well. I can't really tell, and I don't have a great eye for what is stainless and what's not. But again, they're not rusty and they don't appear to be galvanized to me, so I'm not really sure what else they could be. By and large, I don't see why this spreader won't work for my application especially. I'm not gonna be covering hundreds of acres every single year with this thing, but there are a few little things with it that I'm not crazy about. The first thing that stood out to me is where your top link on the three-point mount hooks up to the spreader. They've got an oversized hole here. This top hole is too big for a standard top link on a regular three-point hitch. You can see just how much slop is in that hole and couple that with the fact that this, this attachment point is made out of fairly thin metal. I'd say this is about an eighth of an inch thick and I think that when we go bouncing down through the field, that this top pin is going to start to tear that hole out. So I think before I even use this for the first time, I'm gonna go ahead and drill some proper sized holes in some quarter or maybe even three eighths plate and weld that on here so that I don't have to worry about that happening. This is not a huge deal for me. I've got the tools and the abilities to take care of this, but maybe not everybody does beyond that top link mounting point i mean you know i wish that some of the metal was thicker i wish some of the welds looked a little bit nicer but i mean all in all at this price point you can't really expect those kinds of things to be any different the top link on the other hand to me that that almost seems like a manufacturing defect like it's not supposed to even be that way but i'm not really sure
As for how I'm planning to use the spreader, I've actually got several different ideas. First of all, one of the things that I've noticed since moving over to a daily move graze system is that I have created a lot of high traffic areas in the pasture. While the cattle may not be on each individual paddock very long, they do have to use the same ground pretty consistently to trail to water and things like that. So what I've ended up with is some dead spots, a lot of trails out here, and it would be nice to come through with a small spreader like that and sort of replant these little areas. You can see where the cattle are walking across these irrigation levees that in a lot of them, they have made trenches that go right through, which is obviously a place where water can leak past and that kind of defeats the whole purpose. So what I need to do this year or definitely next year is to repull these levees and fill in all, the, all of these trenches. And the way that you do that is you hit them with a ridger, which is basically uh, it's almost like a disc and it throws the dirt into the middle. Well, by doing that, you tear up all the grass, you tear all the roots that are in the ground right now. And while that stuff would regrow if we waited long enough, it would be nice to be able to pull the levees and then throw some new seed on top of them so that come spring, when the cattle come out here, those roots have already had a good chance to establish themselves. Of course, I could use a spreader while planting the hay field, and I may end up doing that, even though the spreader that I get from the place that I get the seed and fertilizer is quite a bit bigger. Uh, I've had some issues in the past with getting that one set up right. And then it seems like I get a different one every year, so it's kind of hard to keep consistent results. But I think if I sort of dial in my own piece of equipment, then year after year, I can pretty well count on my field quality turning out the same. But the main reason why I bought the spreader is because this year I got my hands on some soil amendments from Redmond Agriculture that I'm gonna try spreading out here in the field. I'm really excited to do this because I've never, I've never seen somebody do something quite like this. What I got from Redmond is not fertilizer, as in it's not gonna make the grass grow faster and taller like a fertilizer would, but it adds soil health, it adds good minerals and nutrients to the ground, and in turn the grass takes this up so the grass actually becomes more nutritious for the cattle. I'll get a little bit more into the science of how all this works. I'm sort of just giving you the basic uh, nuts and bolts of it now. But basically, it makes your grass more nutritious so that the cattle don't need to eat as much of the high quality stuff if the Dallas grass and the clover and the good stuff that I've got out here is even more nutritious, that the cattle will be more inclined to eat some of the lower quality forage, some of the lower quality weeds that I've got out here. And I might be knocking out two problems at once with this. We'll just kind of have to wait and see. So that is coming here in the next month or so. It'll take a while to really get the results, but You'll be seeing this spreader put to work out in the field before too long. Thanks for hanging out with me today, guys, and I hope I'll see you again on Farmer Tyler Ranch.